The Breath of the Wild 2 teaser trailer looks to be setting the sequel up to be one of the darkest games we've seen in the series, and according to series producer IG Aonuma himself, it's going to be even darker than Majora's Mask. And that's the game in which an older sister gets her younger sister drunk, so she'll die a peaceful death not knowing it's the end of the world. But with Breath of the Wild's sequel, in the teaser reveal trailer, we've got a mummified Ganondorf breaking free of his seal and awakening, eyes burning with malice, which is already one of the most metal things in the Zelda series. I've already gone over the trailer in full in my initial analysis, check that out if you haven't already, but I thought there's still so much confusion around some elements of the teaser that I'd have another look at an idea I mentioned in the video, being the identity of the green energy we see apparently sealing the Gerudo King. So let's have a look at the spiralling magic that keeps the King of Evil subdued and try to work out what we're looking at. Deep below Hyrule seems to lie a network of tunnels and caverns, the dim, flickering torchlight of the heroes illuminating vast walls with Zonai carvings, cave paintings of who appears to be Ganondorf, and ruined pillars. The network of caves is also lit by groups of luminous stones, found in crystals on the cave floor, as well as in great numbers on the walls near a bridge. And at the centre of this cave network lies the centre of mystery of the trailer, the Green Hand. It appears at the end of a great spiralling ribbon of green-blue energy, with what appears to be Gerudo letters forming as the energy moves. This energy focuses at the bottom into the form of a hand, with sharp nails and long skeletal fingers, complete with gold bracelets, holding down a corpse with flaming red hair which is littered with Gerudo symbols, the mummified body of Ganondorf. At some point during the trailer, for reasons unknown, the energy seems to jump to Link, his hand glowing brightly with this green-blue glow, the energy swirling around him as he apparently absorbs it. Once Link is connected with the green energy, we can see that it disappears from the cavern. The next shot of Ganondorf, now apparently free of his seal, doesn't have the same eerie green glow as before. Whatever this green energy was that held him down now resides in Link, and the King of Evil is free, malice burning from his eyes as he returns to life. So despite the fact that we see a lot of this green-blue energy, and the hand itself, in the trailer, we don't know anything about it. We don't know why it's down here, who it belongs to, how long it's been apparently sealing Ganondorf, or why it jumps to Link. But there are clues, the largest of which are the luminous stones, found everywhere in this trailer, glowing the same supernatural green as the hand. Luminous stones play a small role in Breath of the Wild, they're used mainly for money making, but also in a few shrine quests and Korok puzzles. It was definitely a conscious decision to feature so many luminous stones in this trailer, they appear in three separate shots in large numbers, despite being a relatively minor part of the original game. So what's the connection between these luminous stones and the hand, which appears to be formed of the same green-blue energy? Well, like I mentioned in my analysis, there's an interesting point made in the in-game description for luminous stones. They're said to contain the souls of the dead. These stones, which in the dark grow an eerie green-blue colour, are actually illuminated by the spirits of the dead. And it seems that the luminous stones seen in the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer are pure luminous crystals. Many people have been pointing out that the crystalline structure is similar to time shift stones, not the dark, rough rocks from which luminous stones are gathered. The ore deposits from which we can mine the stones in Breath of the Wild are muddied with dark stone, with only parts of the rock glowing. But when mined, the deposits yield the clear-cut, pure luminous crystals, but also occasionally flint, meaning these ore deposits are impure, luminous stones mixed with other rock. These stones found deep below Hyrule appear to be pure crystals of luminous stone, glowing in their entirety with the ghostly green. We can even see what appears to be a minecart rail on a bridge, suggesting that whoever once inhabited these caves used them to mine these spirit-imbued stones. The connection to spirits goes deeper than just the luminous stones item descriptions, however. The spectral green-blue light emitted by the gemstone is actually used across the Zelda series to represent spirits or souls, 
Like the deceased champions and the king in Breath of the Wild, who are surrounded by wisps of blue-green flame, or the Lord of the Mountain, the phantom horse-like creature that's found on Satori Mountain, who is obviously an homage to the late Satoru Iwata, but in-universe is supposedly the reincarnated spirit of an ancient sage. This reincarnated spirit emits the same blue-green glow as the spirits of the champions and the luminous stones, and the spectral hand in the trailer. During Twilight Princess, Zant, the usurper king of Twilight, mortally wounds the light spirits, stealing their tears of light and causing their provinces to fall into Twilight. When this happens, the Hylian civilians are trapped in Twilight, becoming spirits. Without light, Hylians will become spirits. In Twilight, we can see that they become lost, weak blue-green flames flickering in the darkness. And even with Link's enhanced wolf senses, these people appear as ghosts, tinged with this blue-green glow of spirits. Spirits are in some way closely connected to light, just like the luminous stones, which in most instances are known to only glow at night. Some exceptions exist to this rule, but in most cases, luminous stones are dull in the day, but without light glow this eerie blue-green. The same connection to spirits is true for the Sheikah monks, who upon completing their task and awarding Link a spirit orb, fade away into this mysterious blue-green energy. Wait, spirit orb. The collectible item found in all shrines in Breath of the Wild is given to you by a Sheikah monk seconds before they fade away, and can be redeemed for greater life or stamina gauges. Might these orbs be the life force of the Sheikah monks themselves, combined with Link to empower him with greater strength? They appear from the chest of the Sheikah monk, the same spot in which they're absorbed by Link and when a goddess statue describes them, the text in the chat box is this same mysterious blue-green. Sheikah monks in Breath of the Wild are examples of Soku Shinbutsu, a form of Buddhist mummy where the monkers practice asceticism to the point of death, essentially mummifying themselves alive. The Sheikah monks, in their eternal service to the goddess Hylia, gave up their lives and as their final act gift link manifestations of their spirit as a symbol of courage. Spirit orbs connected to the eerie green essence of spirits, connected to courage. Could this be the missing piece to Breath of the Wild's puzzle? See, in Breath of the Wild we saw two major forms of powerful energy clash together, the powerful malice of Calamity Ganon and the mysterious blue glow of the wise Sheikah's technology. These two powerful forces fit well with two of the Golden Goddesses, the trio responsible for the creation of Hyrule. Din, the goddess of power, with her flaming arms forged the earth itself, and Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, gave law and science to the world. And in Breath of the Wild, the hateful malice of Calamity Ganon, the embodiment of power, is the cause of Hyrule's downfall. The churning, boiling red mass forms pools, even great spires on the land, growing like a cancer on the world with Ganon's influence. To counteract Ganon's malice, we have the brilliant blue of the Sheikah's technology, a mysterious sapphire ancient energy which can take the form of a solid, a liquid, even plasma, and powers all of the creations of the wise ancient Sheikah. A century before the game, Princess Zelda makes it her mission to solve the secret of the Sheikah's lost technology, a power forged from science and wisdom. But by the time of Breath of the Wild, Calamity Ganon's malice has proved too much for the benevolent power of the Sheikah with his hatred staining the blue of the guardians and divine beasts a violent pink, and his malice even corrupting the spirit of wisdom, the dragon Nadra. With the aid of the hero, Hyrule was successful in defeating the plague of Calamity Ganon, but it always felt anticlimactic, didn't it? The divine beasts were never needed to win. Hell, Link doesn't even deal the final blow to the dark beast. It's because something's missing, a third piece to the Triforce, a third energy to match the power of malice and the wisdom of ancient energy, spirit. This green energy which is absorbed by Link could be the final piece which was missing from Breath of the Wild. The energy of Furore, 
the goddess of courage, the ancient being who, with her rich soul, produced all life forms who would uphold the law. I mentioned in my initial analysis that early Breath of the Wild concept art showed a version of Link who has lost his right arm, and in its place wields a powerful bionic Sheikah machine, which grants him a number of different abilities. And here we have Link's right arm consumed by this energy, perhaps a different take on the same game mechanic. I also mentioned that Breath of the Wild took a lot of inspiration from the Studio Ghibli film Princess Mononoke, in which the main character Ashitaka's right arm is corrupted by a demon, granting him superhuman strength but eventually meaning his doom. This spirit energy may be the new game mechanic in Breath of the Wild's sequel. In place of the Sheikah Slates, the hero might use the ancient power of spirits to perform new abilities and combat evil. This idea that Link might wield this spirit magic to his own advantage might seem far-fetched, even though we see him absorbing it in the trailer, until we look back to Breath of the Wild, where Link actually used this very same energy before, the champion's abilities. After freeing the spirit of each champion, Link can learn their signature techniques, Ravali's Gale, Urbosa's Fury, Daruk's Protection, and Mipha's Grace. When used, the green-blue spirit energy can be seen, alongside apparitions of the champions themselves. And the champions' powers are given to Link through spirit orbs, from the chest of the champion to Link's chest, just like the spirits of the Sheikah monks. While the monk spirits grant Link health and stamina, the spirits of the champions grant him abilities. Like Daruk says, the power from the depths of his soul now lives inside Link. What if the new gameplay mechanic for Breath of the Wild's sequel involves collecting the powers of spirits? By helping characters or defeating bosses, Link may be able to absorb the energy of their spirits, becoming more powerful and gaining new abilities. The energy of spirits is the third piece of the Triforce, the energy of the Goddess of Life, the creator of the Triforce of Courage. This spirit energy is Link's part of the trio, and I'm sure it'll play a big role in the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Whatever this spirit energy is, it'll swing the balance in the favour of the living, in the favour of Hyrule. While the Triforce itself was largely absent in Breath of the Wild, thematically it seems stronger than ever in the sequel. With the energies of wisdom and courage, Link and Zelda will take on one of the darkest, most sinister threats Hyrule has ever faced, the source of malice, the hating, vengeful, resurrected Gerudo King, Ganondorf. But there's one thing we've still got to mention. The green energy, the energy of spirits, isn't moving towards Ganondorf like you'd expect for a seal. It's moving away from him. Could this spirit energy, woven with Gerudo text, be Ganondorf's spirit? Thanks for watching this Breath of the Wild theory. What do you guys think the green energy is? There's a great video by Croton, a criminally underrated Zelda channel, on the symbolism of the green energy. Check it out if you want with the card in the top right. If you like this video, drop a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.